alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Fathi Gawe and I'll be your host for the night. And uh, my name is Abdurrahman Ayente. I will be a co-host with Fathi. Um, Abdurrahman is an editor for the um, Voices of America. And Fathi Gele is a student at the University of Minnesota. Our first um, speaker will be Hamza Saeed, who is a student at the Salah Deen um, Mosque at Tarah Hijjah, and he will be reciting the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Allahu nuru samawati wal ar. مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يقد من شجرة مباركة من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسس نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والأصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار صدق الله العظيم. صدق الله العظيم. حمزة، thank you very much for that beautiful recitation of the Quran. Once again, I want to welcome you all to this wonderful event that we're going to have tonight about Wahbara. In 2008-2009 school year, over 500 Somali students have graduated from around Minnesota from high school, charters, and college and universities. We hope in the coming years this number will increase, hopefully in part of our encouragement to the youth to aim high and succeed in higher education. Wahbar was launched in early 2009 with one simple aim, to honor and celebrate graduates from high schools, colleges, and universities annually. Most of the people who are official members of this project are college graduates, current students, and community leaders who are determined to give back their communities. Wahbar meaning learn something is a term coined to encourage to learn and pursue higher education. It's a common knowledge that education opens many doors and of opportunities. Therefore, we try to encourage our students to pursue these opportunities. Once the students obtain the education, they will be a great asset not only here in the United States, but also back home in Somalia. We hope to accomplish our goal by doing the following. Planning a graduation ceremony for Somali graduates, honor them for their hard work and dedication, open the communication lines between Somali professionals and, and the students pursuing higher education, st establishing a solid mentorship for high school students. We organize this event to acknowledge the success of our students where they may be in the States, giving them hope that there is a community that cares about the academic achievement and are willing to inspire today's youth to become tomorrow's leaders. As the Somali proverb goes, meaning without knowledge, there is no light. As parents, we hope that you can support us through this telling, through telling your child about the importance of education and to inspire your children to compete for academic excellence, knowing that in the end, they will be awarded for their achievements. And as students, we hope that you can see us as a resource that can help you in your journey towards attaining your dreams. We consist of young people from different fields that are ready to serve as your peer mentors and help you in making your dreams come true. And our message to everyone, by celebrating the achievements of these young students, we are sending them the message that we, as a Somali community, are proud of them and support them. We hope that by doing this, we will encourage other youth to also pursue their higher education. 
Today, we're happy to shed a light on the academic achievements of our youth in promoting education through entertainment, such as spoken word, panel discussions of recent and current college graduates, um, students from various fields, and motivational speakers that will inspire graduates to reach for the stars, for only the sky is the limit. Um, so now we're going to get to the speakers, and the first line of order before we get to the speakers actually is we're going to um, have a young group of uh, Somalis to sing the uh, Somali national anthem, and it will be sang by the Young Achievers who are a group of young Somalis who strive to achieve more. The national anthem is being sung by Mohammed Farah and Young Achievers. Welcome. <laughs> success and all the hard work you have put forth to complete this milestone in your educational career. My name is Mohamed Samatar, as I said. I'm a junior going to be a senior at Southwest High School. And I'm, a, I'm also a student at Salahuddin Islamic School at the Masajid Dar al-Hijra, and I attend many Islamic study circles at the same Masajid. I'm one of the officials of Dar al-Hijra Youth Council, a youth organization within the mosque. These days when people start to define their background, precisely their educational background, they rarely mention the Islamic education they receive. But for me, both academic education and Islamic education are identical. I'm not standing in front of you tonight to lecture you on some cliche speech on what college to attend or what career path to take. What I want to get across tonight is the importance of academia and Islamic education and how they are interconnected. Education is the cornerstone in life that makes everything possible for a civilization. Without an uh, education, um, for example, if literacy is low in a country, and that country will never make any progress. Therefore, education is human rights. As Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, seeking knowledge is mandatory upon every Muslim male or female. When you're talking about literacy, it's not only reading or writing. For example, take English. As, you, as my, some people believe, but also literacy is reading and understanding the religion of Islam. For example, when we look at the history of Muslims rule this world, not through material, uh, military tactics, but more importantly through knowledge and inventions. About a thousand years ago, the Islamic caliphs were the most powerful, powerful governments in the world, the most popular subjects in academia in, this de in these days that everyone wants to excel is in medicine, science, math, geography. But if you look back in the history books, you'll find that Muslims were the pioneers of these popular subjects. Math, for example, will never have been able to count numbers such as 10, 
hundred, thousand, million, or trillion, and etc. without the discovery of zero. And you know who discovered zero. A math course that you would never have been able to graduate from high school with, let alone to attend a college, is algebra. The inventor of subject algebra, Muhabib ibn Musa al-Khawarzimi. You know him, who carries his name? And I'm sure some of us when our classmate calls us Muhammad, you might feel ashamed and sometimes wanting to change your name to Mo or others completely changing their name. But in reality, you find Muhammad wherever subject you try to excel. In algebra, we find Muhammad. Chemistry, physics, and Quran. I can go all day about the main point, but the main point is to be proud of your identity and name. The most popular person in medicine was Abu Sina, who wrote the first medical book. The inventor of geography was Harun Rashid. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to continue on this history lesson, but I want you to take from this is Islam is the backbone of education, and Muslims were the pioneers of civilizations. I want to thank my colleagues and friends at Dada Hucha.